Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today with something a little bit different. Today we're going to rank the top five archetypes inside the meta right now at the end of 2018. Now this list could be subject to change in the next balance changes or the one after that, but I thought it would be a good kind of opportunity to touch base with where the meta stands right now and also go over the archetypes in the game for those of you who may be new players since two years ago when I made my first archetype video. Now, another quick disclaimer is that every archetype is actually viable right now. So even if you're an expo user or you're a spawner user, of course, if you're having success with a deck, go ahead and continue playing it by all means. And if you want to be better prepared to counter the meta decks or the most effective decks in the meta, maybe this list will give you some good ideas on how to build a counter deck for the current meta. So let's go ahead and jump into the list. Coming in at number five on our list, guys, is going to be Bait. And this was a really difficult one for me because Bait has definitely been in better spots in the game. Now, when we say Bait, we mean small spell bait. So, Zap Bait and Log Bait. And there's really a few deck types that fit into the archetype. The classic Princess Goblin Barrel Log Bait deck. You have the Zap Bait with the Mega Knight in the Skeleton Barrel, which isn't really used in this meta that often. And of course, we have the Sparky bait decks using Sparky, Inferno Dragon, the newly buffed Skarmy, Spear Goblins, Bats, you guys get the point. So there's a lot of bait decks kind of going around in and outside the meta, some right on the cusp of being really uh, viable CRL meta decks, such as Sparky decks. We'll see how the Electro Dragon changes that. But as of right now, bait is still the number one archetype used on ladder. That means a lot of people must be having at least moderate amounts of success with it, and we even saw it in CRL used here and there. There's a lot of good bait players out there, and it's generally considered a moderate to high level skill deck amongst pros, amongst the regular community. Well, let's face it, you guys think, at least according to the comments, that everything is a low skill deck, but bait actually to play it at a high level, believe it or not, it does require a lot of skill. Everybody's running log or barbarian barrel or fireball. Everybody has a bunch of different kinds to that goblin barrel so as a bait player you have to adjust and they have done that right now in the meta there's a good prince bait deck going around uh, royal giant has crept into the bait meta we're even seeing hog bait hybrid decks being used even at the top of ladder so there's definitely and even rascals are a good addition to bait decks. so there's a definitely a bunch of still competitive and viable decks to make bait number five here on our list of top five archetypes let's move on to number five four. Number four on the list is going to be bridge spam. Now, when you say bridge spam, it can mean one of two things, and we're definitely talking about more of one than the other. We're not talking so much about elite barbarians and rage and fire spirits all played at the bridge as a starting play in the match. That's not the bridge spam we're talking about here. We're talking about the uh, one of the two archetypes which was actually not around at the start of the game. It was only with the introduction of new cards to the game that bridge spam actually became a thing. And two of those main cards was Bandit and Battle Ram back in early 2017. Now, the Vietnam team in CR Worlds actually were the first to use this in a competitive environment, in a competitive atmosphere, and with great success. What they did was combo the Night Witch, which was new and OP at the time, with cards like Battle Ram and Bandit, allowing them to defend, picking up a lot of positive elixir advantages and then try to cash in once they had those big advantages using those high pressure cards such as again Battle Ram and Bandit. So Bridge Spam is really really doing well right now because after we fast forward to present day with Bridge Spam we're really looking at using the Magic Archer and the Royal Ghost in addition to the cards we already discussed to wait for one of two things to happen. When you're playing Bridge Spam you're really defending early on and you're waiting to pick up a positive Positive elixir trade on defense from your opponent's attacking troops and then cash in with that bridge spam or you're just waiting for them to make a mistake and waiting to get to double elixir time so you can wait for them to overcommit on defense to one lane and then you hit them hard in the other lane 
oftentimes bridge spam gets a bad rap for being a very low skill archetype. That's really not the case again, kind of like bait in my opinion at least. To play bridge spam at a high level, you have to be very good at knowing when to switch lanes, knowing when to attack, and oftentimes you have to attack right away before your opponent has the chance to recoup some of that elixir. Now as I mentioned, the Magic Archer and of course the Royal Ghost have been great additions. The Magic Archer oftentimes played around the bridge as well to get some of that incidental damage with perfect precision placement to also hit the tower and support the cards at the same time. That's why Bridge Bam makes this list as number four on the top archetypes. Moving into the top three, number three on the list is going to be Beatdown. Beatdown is so good right now, it's so strong, and when we talk about Beatdown, we're basically talking about one fundamental rule to these decks. You have to be comfortable using your princess's towers, HP as a resource, meaning that sometimes you just lightly defend, or maybe you don't defend at all, and you cash in on all that elixir savings from not defending to mount a giant beatdown push, or a golem, or a lava hound beatdown push. Now those are the three cards that we talk about when we refer to beatdown for the most part right now in the meta. Well, So the golem is incredibly good right now, and we're seeing the golem game kind of evolve to where we don't use Use pump that often anymore. Of course, it's still viable with pump, but we're seeing top players such as Royal and Flobby sub in poison or fireball or big spells, usually poison in the place of the pump to give them even more versatility and pump really isn't in the best spot as well right now in the game. So when you have that poison and you take all that tower damage, you can just execute a monster golem push, combo the poison on any of the defending troops and oftentimes that will result in a three crown. Beatdown is the master of three crown matches. If you like three crowns, run golem beatdown. Now the other two archetypes or the other two deck types in this archetype which are meta right now are giant which continues to thrive we're seeing giant still used in the double prince format or giant used in some sort of a baity hybrid way and we're seeing giant three spell of course with the minor as well as a secondary win condition so giants in a great spot and then lava hound maybe out of the three was in a little bit worse of a spot but definitely so strong and viable but with the introduction of the Electro Dragon, I anticipate Lava Hound and Lava Loon is only going to get stronger. Of course, the Electro Dragon also provides a counter to some of these beatdown decks, but in my opinion, when you add the Electro Dragon to Golem or to Lava Hound decks, they become just that much stronger because they're going to be able to protect that tank from the Inferno Tower or from the Inferno Dragon. I'm a big fan of beatdown, and that's why it ranks number three on this list. Number two on our list is going to be the dual lane or the split lane archetype. Now this is another archetype that did not exist back when the game was first released. It was thanks to pioneers of the game like Esli and Darth Jar Jar and Yui who actually used the split musketeers instead of placed in the same lane for the first time in competitive tournaments or a competitive environment that gave us the idea Split cards are actually fun and surprisingly effective. Now since then, a bunch of extra cards have been added to further bolster the archetype and make it so that you don't just need three musketeers to play a split lane archetype. Now the addition of Royal Hogs, in my opinion, was what really took this archetype to the next level, vaulting it into the top five all the way up to number two on our list right now. You can play Royal Hogs with or without three musketeers. In playing the Royal Hogs solo, for example, of course you can split them, and they can be really difficult and annoying even when split at the top of the bridge, uh, which you don't th usually split three musketeers. Usually three musketeers are mostly split behind the king tower or right in front of the king tower, whereas with the Royal Hogs, they're opposite. You mostly see them split at the river in the center of the arena. Now Royal Hogs can also be used in the same lane once you're 
your opponent's best counters to Royal Hogs are out of their hand. So Royal Hogs really developed this archetype into what it is today, which is really based on the win rates. You could probably make a case this should be number one on the list. The only reason it's not number one is because I think the number one choice is a little bit more consistent out of the two. Now, three Musketeers have benefited in Royal Hogs from other recent additions to the game, such as Royal Recruits, Royal Hogs, Royal Ghost, all the Royal cards, Battle Ram throughout the years. Every time they add these new split lane cards, Zappies, it even further bolsters the archetype, making it even more viable and even more of a pain to deal with for the defenders. So that's why split lane or dual lane archetype is, comes in at number two on our list today. Now, before we get to number one, I do want to go over a couple honorable mentions, a.k.a. just uh, number six, seven, and eight on the list. It could have been top eight, because I do think there are eight archetypes. Now, I want to go throw a little bit of love out there to cycle players, because 2.6 Hog Cycle is still one of the best free-to-play friendly decks out there. Same thing with minor cycle decks. They're really fun, probably not one of the best decks, though. But really, it's all the story of the, the really strong defensive trifecta, defensive combo of Tornado, Ice Whiz, and Tombstone. So many decks run Nato and Tombstone that it's just impossible as a Hog Cycle player to outcycle two hard counters. That's why in Minor Cycle it's just in a really tough spot right now unless you're an amazing player. So that's why Cycle didn't make the list. Siege, I think that Mortar is actually in a pretty healthy spot. As I said at the top of the video, all the archetypes are actually viable right now depending on on who's playing them and what trophy range and all that stuff. So I think that Mortar could have been made a case to be number five on the list or, or Siege, excuse me, but Expo isn't in the best spot. Of course, some people still have success with Expo, some elite pro players, and even some people who are just really familiar with the archetype, but that's not to say that it's in the best spot in the meta. I, I really don't think it is after the Royal Giant buff especially. And Spawners, well, Spawners... I don't know. I think they're just kind of a niche thing unless you're playing like the Rage Challenge. So let's go ahead and move on to number one on the list. And number one on the list is going to be Control. Control has never been stronger than it is today in the game. We're seeing a bunch of Control meta archetypes. Now, Control includes Graveyard decks. It includes Minor Poison, Cannon Cart decks, Ice Whiz decks. It also includes P.E.K.K.A. decks. P.E.K.K.A. Battle Ram, kind of a hybrid deck. But it doesn't fall into the Bridge Spam archetype. These are matches where you want to just continue to stack up and keep alive defensive troops in order to counter push for an unstoppable lethal dose of damage that your opponent just cannot defend because they exhausted a lot of their elixir on offense. Control is really good again because of the synergy of all these cards right now and the strength of cards like P.E.K.K.A, like Ice Wizard, like Tornado allows them to oftentimes just stay alive on defense and then especially in double elixir, especially once you know and have identified identified what deck your opponent is playing, what their counters are to your deck, it's really well poised to just dominate your opponent. And there's not many hard counters out there. Again, going back to that conversation that I have, I was actually talking to a pro player, Brandink, about his opinion between dual lane and control. And he said it's really close, but he also gives the nod to control because, again, just the consistency of these decks, they're always a difficult matchup no matter what you're facing or no matter what your opponent is playing, they're going to have problems against a really good control deck or a really good control player. Gone are the days where if you're running graveyard and your opponent has poison, forget it, hard countered, goodbye, GG, rock, paper, scissors, I lose. It's not like that anymore. These decks have so much poison bait and just offensive versatility and defensive versatility that you're able to just defend, pick your spots, and even chip away towers sometimes or baiting 
spitting out the poison. Now, even the control archetype has evolved to where some pro players like OP Sam, he doesn't even use a win condition. He kind of first played that really strong Barbarian Hunt, Cannon Cart, Flying Machine, Magic Archer deck, where there's no obvious win condition. All you're doing is defending and waiting for your opponent to overcommit on defense or offense or making a mistake and then you punish. All of these reasons may control the best and strongest archetype in my opinion as of right now in the meta in Clash Royale. And that's it guys, that is my list. I want to hear from you guys, what are your top three archetypes? Let me know in the comments below. I want to throw that one to you guys. Which archetype did I not show enough love to? Go ahead and let me know. Huge shout out to Stats Royale where I get a lot of the deck statistics for this video. And of course to my YouTube partner, Bren Shong. Check out his information as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching and as always, take care guys.